Welcome to Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, here with my co-host Gary LaRue and special guest Abhishek Kapoor, Vice President of Sales at Inoki Wave. Welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. It's your uh, 20th year in business. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've evolved from a design house into a major IC manufacturer? Absolutely, yes. 2019 is a very special year for us. It marks our 20th anniversary. A time for us to step back and look at where we started, what we have achieved, and where we are going. So for a lot of your viewers and audience who may not know, Nokia Wave actually started in 1999 by Nitin Jain and Deepti Jain. And we started as a custom design house where we would do a design. We, we would work with aerospace and defense customers, tier one, tier two, even commercial customers, do a design for them, but we would not manufacture the IC and we would hand it off to them. And over this, these years, for 14 years, we learned a lot in different areas, we would do a lot of forward-looking designs that a lot of large semiconductor companies would not sign up to. And we built this huge IP portfolio over these years and especially got exposed to this area of active antennas and phased arrays, which, as you know, is not a very well-understood technology on the commercial side. In 2013, we actually made this big shift or a business decision to become a product company. The big question we had to ask ourselves was, who do we really want to be? There are dozens of semiconductor companies out there and, and there was a bigger problem that we wanted to solve. And what we saw at that time was this convergence of upcoming 5G market, SATCOM market and radar around this fundamental phased array architecture. And we decided that we as a company will provide the enabling ICs that's going to make the commercialization of these three markets a reality. And we made some really bold choices. If you think about that, back in 2013, we decided to dedicate ourselves in making millimeter wave phased arrays in silicon a reality. A lot of people questioned us both from a technical viability standpoint, from a commercial viability standpoint, but we persisted. And today we are actually seeing how the market has evolved. We grew from two people in 99 to five people in 2013 to about 100 people today. Mm, wow. Today we have more than 50 released products, which is the largest portfolio of silicon core ICs for active antennas in the whole world. We are the only company that's covering the whole paradigm of millimeter wave in 5G, SATCOM, and radar. We believe that the largest silicon IC design team focused completely on active antennas or beamformer IC designs. So that's a huge accomplishment. Uh, we are working with a lot of tier one and tier two customers. The market is ramping up and we are becoming the trusted choice in the market itself where we have been invited by various uh, key entities. We are the part of the ORAN Working Group 7 Alliance, right. which is, if you think about that, if you just step back and think, a small company that was being questioned in its viability now being on the on the committee that's defining what the reality of this 5G is going to look like or the SATCOM is going to look like. That's pretty amazing. It's a very special year for us and we'll be celebrating this at the IMS this year as well. Great. I think uh, looking back, some of the early work that Nitin did really was the pioneering work in doing millimeter wave in silicon. Correct. And as you say, there were a lot of skeptics in those years. Yes. Well, you just recently announced, I think, the third third generation of some of your ICs. Talk a little bit about the evolution, what the third generation does. Absolutely. So keeping up with the trend, we are almost releasing one generation of new ICs every year. And this year we are coming out with the third generation of our millimeter wave 5G ICs. With each generation, we improve the RF performance. So the key specs, of course, like increasing the RF power, decreasing the power dissipation, lowering the noise figure, and most importantly, bringing the cost down. So these parts become more accessible to most of the broad market. So those are the things that we are doing with each generation. In third generation, few things that we have done and which are very unique are we introduced this concept of dual polarization. So we are bringing the dual polarization millimeter wave core ICs in silicon for all three 5G bands, 24 slash 26, 28 and 37 slash 39 gigahertz. And across all these bands, the parts are pin and digital compatible. So if you do a design for one band, you're basically getting designed for all three oh, bands. Great. You don't have to redo your board layouts and other things. You can basically reuse the same design across all three bands. Wow. So that's huge. In terms of RF performance, we doubled the RF power while keeping the DC power the same. That's a huge accomplishment mm -hmm. from a performance standpoint. But that's just 50% of the equation because behind this is a lot of digital functionality that comes into play. So the two key features that we have are uh, kinetic green, 
and zero calibration. Kinetic green essentially reduces your overall power dissipation by about 33% at a radio level or at a system level. And just to give you a context, in a region which has 500,000 macro base stations and 5 million small cell base stations working at full duty cycle. The radios built using Anoki Wave ICs are going to consume about 33% less power, which, just to give you a perspective, translates to about 20% of the power generated by Hoover Dam. And that, further to give you a perspective, translates to about the amount of power that is taken by 82,000 US houses in one year. Wow. That's a big Impressive. deal. Yeah. The operators care about that. So that's the kind of impact we are trying to do. The zero calibration is another feature which basically allows OEMs to build arrays and not have to do calibration on these arrays. That's just because of the way our ICs are designed. Additionally, and most importantly, uh, the cost. So over the last three years, we have brought down the cost by about 95%, and we have pretty ambitious goals going forward. So overall, we are setting the benchmark, we are setting the standard of what these ICs should be in terms of performance, in terms of cost, so they become accessible to everyone in the market. So Anoki Wave was one of the first to offer commercial millimeter wave chipsets for 5G fixed wireless access. Can you tell us how that's going from your perspective now that it's rolling out? It's actually going better than what we even projected. So, so last year when, when we were talking over here, we, we were talking about, okay, how the 5G market is ramping up and the ramp up has fully begun. The key milestones uh, or the key events that happened last year was one in October of 2018 when Verizon announced its millimeter wave 5G commercial mm -hmm. service, followed by AT&T doing the same thing in December. And the most surprising thing over there was the first commercial deployment in 5G came out to be millimeter wave, despite yeah, all the right. talks. So that, that, that was pretty a uh, key moment for us. We are seeing a huge demand. We are shipping in very high volume across uh, the market. We are not talking about hundreds of thousands or just thousands of ICs. We are talking about millions of ICs mm -hmm. that we are shipping. We are also seeing the expansion of market. So within 5G, we are seeing multiple sub-segments appearing. So fixed wireless access was of course the first one, followed by now you have the small cells, access points, CPEs, and those use cases are coming up. And uh, more spectrum is opening up, like in 24 gigahertz, the last I checked, it was up to $1.8 billion that had been bid. That's mm -hmm. billion with a B. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge amount of money that these operators are trying to put behind making 5G a reality. And we are seeing this pull from across the globe. Internationally, Europe and Asia are finally picking up on the millimeter wave 5G bandwagon. We were recently in, in uh, Taiwan and we did a seminar and we had more than 500 participants show up for that. And this is just so that they can become familiar with millimeter wave 5G and start to build this up. And not to digress too much, but 5G is one piece of the equation in this world of global connectivity. We are seeing a similar ramp up even on the SATCOM side because at the end of the day, what as a company we want to enable is this vision of ubiquitous connectivity. And 5G is one piece of that equation. SATCOM, the LEOs, MEOs are another piece of that. And that's happening together. These are going to be two complementary services. And Noki is just providing ICs in, into that SATCOM and 5G market as well. Well, you mentioned earlier IMS, which is coming up in just a few weeks here in Boston. What will be the theme? What are some of the things you'll be talking to folks about? So keeping up with the tradition, like we always do, we have a special announcement here at uh, Frequency Matters. Uh, about a new product release, not just the third uh, generation beamformer ICs, but also in addition to that, we will have our IFICs or the up and down converters for uh -huh. millimeter wave 5G that we will be releasing. These are going to be available in all three millimeter wave bands, the 24 slash 26, 28 and 39 gigahertz. One of the things that I would like to highlight is that these IFICs are not just meant to be another IFICs because we can do it. It's meant to optimize the overall array level performance. Like if you remember back last year when we were talking, everything that we do at Anoki Wave is meant to optimize the overall array performance. And same is the case with these IFICs. They are specially designed to optimize the overall millimeter wave array performance in all three bands. And uh, that, that's the main purpose. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot use it independently. Of course you can, but the, the purpose is that they're designed to work with the Nokia Wave ICs to provide the best benchmark performance in the, in the industry. These are going to be pin compatible and digital compatible across all three of the bands. So it's the same philosophy. If you do a design for one band, you can basically reuse 
everything except your antenna element and change that. And of course, we recently also announced our Gen 2 SATCOM ICs in both KKA and KU band. So that's going to be featured at our booth as well. So lots of fun stuff and many more new things coming this year. Great. Well, we appreciate you coming on this yeah. show. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. It's been very impressive to see as the companies developed the system engineering you would apply to this because a lot of semiconductor companies don't understand the system and clearly Inoki Wave does. Yes. Thanks yes. for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much.